So you want to go deep on uh, smoking in your lungs, huh? Yeah. I have to say, after looking through all this research, it's a lot more complicated than just smoking causes cancer. Yeah, way more to it. It's kind of wild, really. Like, what else is there? Ever heard of SRAF? Uh, no. It stands for Smoking-Related Interstitial Fibrosis. Okay. So picture this. Your lungs, they're like a sponge, right? With all these little air sacs, all delicate for oxygen exchange. SRIF. Mm -hmm. It basically makes that sponge all stiff and thick with scar tissue. So it's like your lungs, they can't really inflate the way they should. Exactly. And here's the kicker. A lot of times people don't even know they have it. Really? Yeah. It's often found like incidentally, like say someone's having surgery for something else entirely and bam, there it is. Wow. Yeah. So how do you even know if you have this SRAF thing going on? Well, when it starts to really cause problems, you'll feel it. Like you get this nagging cough that just won't quit or you're out of breath, even after just like a little bit of activity. Okay, so those are some red flags. But I always thought, like, that was something that only happened to, you know, really heavy smokers, like, later in life. But not always. There was this one study, the Vehar study, they found cases of people in their 40s and 50s, relatively young, showing SRI on their scans. Wow, that's younger than I would have thought. Right, and here's where it gets interesting. On a CT scan, SRIF shows up as these, like, hazy areas, almost like you're looking through frosted glass. Doctors call them ground glass opacities. Okay, so frosted glass, that's not a good sign, huh? Not really. And another thing, these SRAF cases, they often didn't have much emphysema, which you usually see with smokers. It's like the lungs are picking a different way to react to the smoke. Huh, that's weird. This Vehar study, they had some pretty interesting patient stories, didn't they? Six patients, all with SRIF, uh -huh. but their experiences were all over the map. Totally. Ages from 42 to 57, and what's kind of surprising, more women than men in this particular study. Really? I would have thought it would be the opposite. Yeah, it challenges those assumptions, you know? And it just goes to show you, SRIF affects everyone differently. Some with mild symptoms, some way worse, some still smoking, some quit. Each person's lungs have their own story, I guess. Exactly. And, you know, it used to be doctors would lump similar cases together and call it DIP, disquamative interstitial pneumonia. DIP. Doesn't sound great. Why did they stop using that? Well, the name itself is misleading. Desquamation makes it seem like cells are shedding from the lungs lining, which we now know isn't really accurate for SRF. And this misdiagnosis, it wasn't just a name thing. So people were getting the wrong treatment. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to get it right. Yeah, for sure. This whole NSIP thing I saw in the research, it said SRAF can sometimes look like other lung diseases, even under a microscope. It's true. It can be tricky. SRAF mimicking NSIP, that's nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, by the way. It's something researchers are still working on. So what's the big deal with that? Well, imagine you're a doctor, right? You see these hazy patches on a scan. SRIF and NSEP might look similar, but the treatments are different, like trying to solve a puzzle, but the pieces don't quite fit. Got to get that diagnosis right. Absolutely. And it makes you wonder, why do some smokers get SRIF while others get, say, emphysema or even lung cancer? Is it genes? Something in their environment. Just bad luck. It's a real head scratcher, isn't it? It is. And, you know, I keep thinking about those pigmented macrophages we talked about. Oh, right. Yeah. What was it you said? Like... Little garbage trucks in the lungs? Exactly. They're like the cleanup crew <clears throat> going around picking up all that nasty stuff from the cigarette smoke. So they're a good thing, right? Trying to protect the lungs. They are to a point. But when you see a ton of them, it means the lungs are working overtime to deal with the damage. So too many garbage trucks, not a good sign. Exactly. And if you see those, plus some of that fibrosis we were talking about, inflammation, it can actually develop into something called RBLD. R-B-I-L-D. Another one for the acronym list. Stands for Respiratory Bronchiolitis Interstitial Lung Disease. Catchy. Basically, that's when those changes in the lungs start to cause real problems, you know, symptoms, and it shows up on the scans. So it's like the cleanup crew is overwhelmed, the mess is just too big. Perfect analogy. But here's the thing. Diagnosing RBLD, it can be tricky. How so? Well, remember how we said SRIF can be kind of a chameleon? RBLD is the same way, partly because those pigmented macrophages, they're also found in smokers with other lung issues, like UIP, for example. UIP, that does sound familiar. Usual interstitial pneumonia, that one's serious, causes scarring in the lungs. And it's important to tell the difference, UIP versus something caused by smoking, because the treatments are different. Right, like one puzzle, but the pieces fit together differently. 
Exactly. And that's where the pathologist comes in. They look at a biopsy under the microscope, see those tiny details, and that helps figure out what's really going on. It's incredible what they can tell from just a tiny piece of tissue, isn't it? It really is. And the more we study these details, the more we learn about how smoking affects each person differently, like those genetic mutations we touched on earlier. Oh, right. The KRAS and P53 mutations. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that part went a little over my head. It's complicated stuff, but basically those studies show that smoking can actually change our DNA. Wait, really? Yeah, and those genes, KRAS and P53, they're supposed to help regulate cell growth and repair, but the mutations from smoking can mess that up, increase the risk of lung cancer and other issues. So it's like smoking leaves these ticking time bombs in our cells. In a way, yeah. And they act as kind of a fingerprint, showing that someone has a history of smoking. It makes you wonder, though, our bodies are always trying to fight back against damage. Is there any way to help that process along? What about those new treatments you mentioned? Great question. That's where things get really interesting. One promising area is stem cell therapy. Stem cells. Those are like the blank slates, right? They can become any kind of cell. Exactly. And scientists are looking at ways to use stem cells to repair the lung tissue that's been damaged by smoking. So like giving the lungs fresh building materials to work with. That's the idea. And then there's gene therapy, which is another really exciting area. Okay, now that sounds futuristic. How does that one work? So with gene therapy, you're actually delivering genes into the lung cells. The goal is either to fix faulty genes that might be making someone more vulnerable to damage or even to boost the lungs natural ability to repair themselves. So you're actually rewriting the lungs genetic code to help them heal. You got it. It's still early days, of course, but the potential is huge. I have to say, it's both amazing and kind of humbling. We've learned so much, but there's still so much we don't know. Absolutely. But just knowing that researchers are out there exploring these cutting edge treatments, that's what gives me hope. Me too. And it's not just about understanding how smoking hurts the lungs. It's about figuring out how to help them heal, which is a powerful message. I completely agree. It's really amazing to think like one day we could actually be healing lungs at the genetic level. It's pretty incredible the progress they're making. And it seems like every time we learn something new, it just adds another layer to this whole puzzle of smoking and like what it does to your lungs yeah it's like building a giant mosaic you know each study each case it's like adding a little tile that's a great way to put it and like we keep saying it's so much more than just smoking equals lung cancer right so much more to it we've got srif doing its thing in the background those macrophages working overtime and then you throw in the genetics on top of it all it's a lot when you really think about it. It can be overwhelming, but that's why we do this, right? The more we understand about each piece, the better we are at diagnosing and treating it. You mentioned before, sometimes doctors need a whole team to make sense of it all. Oh, absolutely. For these complex lung issues, especially from smoking, it often takes a whole team. Pulmonologists, radiologists, pathologists, they all get together in these big DPLD conferences, discuss cases, make sure they're on the right track. So it's like a team of detectives trying to crack the case. Exactly. Because every single thing, the symptoms, the scans, the patient's history, it all matters for getting the right diagnosis, the right treatment. It makes you realize how important it is to, like, be your own advocate, ask questions. Couldn't agree more. Don't be afraid to get a second opinion. You know, stay informed. It makes a huge difference. So for anyone listening who might be a little worried about their own lungs after all this, what's the, like, the biggest takeaway? Honestly, the best thing you can do for your lungs is quit smoking, hands down. Even if you've been smoking for years and years? Even then. It's never too late. The lungs are amazing. They can actually repair themselves. And quitting gives them the best chance to do that. So it's like hitting the reset button a little? Sort of, yeah. Quitting lets those natural healing processes we've been talking about kick in, start to undo some of that damage. That's good to hear. I think a lot of people believe once the lungs are damaged, that's it. There's no going back. That's just not true. Smoking causes damage, yes, but it's not a lost cause. The body's incredible at bouncing back, and the lungs are no exception. Besides quitting, is there anything else people can do just to give their lungs a little extra help? Well, besides the obvious, like avoiding secondhand smoke, air pollution, all that, staying active is huge. Yeah. Exercise makes your lungs stronger, helps them work better overall. So even if you can't quit smoking right away, just going for a walk or run, it all helps. Every little bit counts. This whole deep dive has been really fascinating, from tiny cells to like the actual genes in our DNA. 
It's amazing how much there is to learn about the lungs. It's incredible, isn't it? And honestly, we're just scratching the surface. There's so much more to discover. And all that knowledge is going to help people live healthier lives. On that note, I think we'll wrap up our deep dive into smoking and the lungs. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Really enjoyed it. And to everyone listening, remember what we said. Knowledge is power. Stay curious, stay informed, and take good care of those amazing lungs of yours.